single line text and multi line text. Let's start with single line text, which consists of one or several lines of text, and each of them is a separate text object. We'll use the annotation group and select single line text. The first thing to specify is the starting point of the text. Let's arbitrarily choose any area, then input the text height, let's say 2.5, enter. We won't specify the rotation angle, let it be zero. After which we can start typing the text. To finish the command, you need to double click enter or use the control enter key combination. If you want to continue creating lines, you can press enter once. End the command. In this way, after selecting, you can immediately see that they are separate objects, and the current text style chosen for them is the standard, which is located in the text style settings. If necessary, we'll later see that text styles can be changed right in the command line after launching the command. The Properties toolbar has a full list of options for working with single line text, justify, annotative, style, and contents. We can change the content, as well as all the other parameters. Let's now familiarize ourselves with Justify. We'll use single line text again and specify the starting point of the text, but before that, let's pay attention to the command line. We can immediately change the text style from the line. We won't do that for now, but we can choose a Justify. The first justify is left, which will align the text line to the left edge. Specify the starting point. Next, specify the height and the angle of inclination, if we have one. Now we can start inputting the text, aligned to the left edge. Double press on enter, and after selecting the text we can see that the base point of the text is aligned to the left edge. The next type of alignment is center. We'll leave the height as default and the rotation angle as well. Thus, the alignment point took a central position. Actually, that's also what we chose from the command line. And instead of dissecting all the options now, we can take a look at this example. In this example, I will demonstrate how the alignment works and which of the abbreviations stands for what. The first line left will be the main line. Next is the top line, which goes along the top of the capital letters. Next, the middle line, which bisects the capital letters. And the last, the bottom line, which underscores the protruding parts of the text. The text also has sides the left side and the right side, as well as the center. And at the intersections of these lines, we get justify points. By default, there's always the point L, meaning left, the rest we can always choose from the presented options in the command line or from the properties toolbar. Now let's return to our example. And, for example, if you want to align the text in the center, but the alignment point is at the top, for this we'll use single line text. For alignment, we look for top center TC and specify the point. Next, we set the height at 2.5, rotation angle at zero, and start inputting text. Now we see that the alignment point indeed is centered at the top. Let's now see what is most often used in work, that is text insertion. Now, we'll use single line text. Choose Justify Align. Now we need to specify two points in which the text will be inscribed. The first point, the baseline of the text, and the second point, the baseline of the text. And now we can inscribe the text. After we chose Align Text, using the editing grips, we can fit it into this interval. The text will proportionally enlarge or shrink as needed. Now let's get acquainted with the text style. To call the text style dialog box, you can go through the drop down menu of the annotation group Text Style Manager, in which we can see already created default style standard. And the check mark indicates that this standard style is set as current. 
Let's create our own text style and call it new style. Let's set the Cambria font. Typeface italic. Height 0, width factor 1. And let's set the oblique angle to 15. To change the text style of any text, you can simply select the given text and go to the toolbar, then from the drop down list select the new style. To change any parameters, it's not necessary to create a new text style. You can modify the current settings, and this text style will update. Let's set the oblique angle back to zero. Close it. And we see that our rotation angle has automatically updated and became zero. The text also updated in the same way. We can also adjust the width factor, line spacing on the properties toolbar, which we'll cover later in the additional text tools. Regarding the creation of a text style, that's all. Next is multiline text, which consists of text lines or paragraphs, inscribed in a user-specified area, which can be stretched using the editing grips. The number of lines in this area is not limited. Multiline text can also be divided into columns, which, in turn, will still represent a single object. Now let's create multiline text. Specify the first and second corner. The following menu for editing multiline text will open, in which you can change the text style or adjust the settings of text. Let's enter multiline text. By double clicking on this text, the editing menu will immediately open. Let's change the style to standard, and the text will automatically adapt to this text style. It's worth noting that you just need to click in the drawing area with the left mouse button. You don't need to press enter to finish the command. We can also change the number of columns. Let's take a look with an example. Let's select this text. Open the editing menu and use the column creation. At the moment, we have the no column tab activated. We can convert to dynamic columns and to static columns. Let's use static columns and set two columns. These columns can be edited using the editing grips. Also, from this dialog box, we can immediately switch and convert static columns to dynamic ones. Now we set automatic height assignment. We can also set the height manually. We can also insert an additional column. Now let's number the paragraphs. Let's highlight all the text and choose numbered. Now each paragraph has its own number. Also, we can adjust the column parameters, specify their height, width, and the gutter. And we can also switch from a dynamic column back to a static column, or convert everything into a single column. Let's set the gutter to 15, the column to 80, and the height exactly to 75. This is how our multiline text looks now. On the properties toolbar, we see all the parameters we edited width, height, and gutter. The text frame allows us to get a frame around the text. We can work with it or without it, as needed. Also, we can adjust the line space distance. Let it be exactly 10. And we see that editing multiline text is quite straightforward. And now, let's move on to the additional multiline text tools. Tab Annotate, Group Text. The first thing available is Spell Check. Spell Check helps identify all grammatical errors present in the text and also highlights them with an underline. For correct work, it is necessary to open the settings and uncheck the non Cyrillic characters checkbox. Next, we can add new words to the dictionary or correct errors or choose word from the options that the program offers us. 
Let's add word to the dictionary. We also underline errors with a frame. Let's fix this mistake. After applying the changes, the word with the error is automatically edited and we can finish the spell check. Next is justifies text. This command allows you to align text. Next is hiding the background. You can select objects to hide the background and choose a fill color. Let's revert to the original version. The next command is edit text, which opens a dialog box where you can edit the text. The next command is convert text to multiline text. Let's create a single line text and then convert it into a multi-line text. After we have selected single line texts, we can convert it to multi-line text. Now single line text became multi-line. Let's draw an arc for the next command. Next command is text for arc. This command specifies the text by arc form. On the properties toolbar, you can find specified parameters for this text. The text fit command works only with single line text and allows you to stretch or shrink text as needed. The explode text command breaks the text into many solid fragments. Its command is rarely used. This concludes our lesson.